Hey everybody, it's Harry from Snap Your Daddy Barbecue. Now this is a far cry from the pits and the smoke, meat and fire. I'm here out foraging for mushrooms and we have a guide, Professor Kevin, showing us around and uh, looking for mushrooms, going through the book and determining what kind of mushrooms that we can forage, collect and potentially cook. So in this episode, I'm going to show you guys my little foraging mushroom trip with the expert guide. It's going to show us how to identify, select, pick, carefully remove the mushrooms without damaging the mycelium and the environment. We do a little mushroom catch and cook in this episode. Right, trudging through the forest here in Tamales Bay near San Francisco. This one will straight up kill you. Oh, uh, yeah. So this is why we got to do this. Learn to use the book first. Mm -hmm. um, this is a severely degraded and nasty bolete, but it's a good example of what a bolete looks like. When you're learning how to do this, mm -hmm. it is essential that you dig up the entire mushroom. Um, a lot of people will tell you, like, always cut the mushroom. If you don't cut the mushroom, you're going to kill the mycelium. They'll get mad at you. David Aurora, who wrote this book, says that that's garbage. He says, there's no definitive research on that. I've looked up a lot of peer-reviewed academic articles on it. There's no consensus that it will or will not destroy the mycelium. And I've pulled them and I've cut them. But when you're a beginner, you have to pull them. Please pull them because you need the base of the mushroom in order to actually identify it because that is a key attribute of specific families of mushrooms. What you'll do is if you follow these attributes for the uh, oyster mushroom, it feels like leather. Yeah, it feels like leather. Interesting. Yield mushrooms without a ring. So that will be on page 33. Wow. So sometimes they'll be on nice. a standing tree that's dead. Sometimes they'll be on a fallen tree that's dead. But they'll always be on wood. Nice. If it's not grown mm. on wood, yeah. it is definitely nice. not an oyster mushroom. So again, we can go through all these key attributes so that you can confirm that that is in fact what it is. There is a oyster mushroom, which is kind of a darker in color, and then there is the angel wing, which is our coastal variant of the oyster mushroom, which is what that wow. one is. But both edible though, right? Both edible. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so we have our first guild mushroom. Like I said, guild mushrooms for beginners, it's not really a good one to go for until you know there, there are certain species of guild mushrooms that are very easy to identify but something like this i'm like uh mixed we can go through the book and we can see if it's in there but i'm gonna go ahead and say let's pass it up and let's go for something that we actually can eat any of these dead alders whether it's fallen or whether it's standing can have mycelium in it with edible species so what we need to do is kind of walk around and look for stuff growing on the trees. On the trees. On the trees. Eels? Okay. Yep. It Eels. is a chanterelle. Chanterelle. <laughs> 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 okay, so I see nothing looking gills? like a veil. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So where does that take us? Does it have a veil? Does it have a veil? Do the it doesn't look like it. So, so what you can do, now normally when I'm harvesting stuff that grows on wood, I try not to actually scrape into the wood or anything because we don't want to damage the mycelium. But you can take one of these as close as you possibly can to the wood. Oh, oh there's two of them. Actually, and that will allow you to take a look. And yeah, oh, two of them. So this is edible. Okay, what is it? So does it have a scaly sack, a collar? We know already that it is not in what family? Amanita. Amanita. So. Good, Good sign. Time. Good sign. Mm -hmm. It's edible. David's already running off. What I would do is if I got to a section like this where I know it's a miscellaneous light spored gilled mushroom without a ring on the stock, uh -huh. I'm going to go through the entire section and see if there's anything else in there that might look like it. I'll gotcha. tell you right now, there's nothing else in that section that looks like this. No. Mm -hmm. Which means it's got to be either one of these two or it's not in the book, in which case we throw it out. Right. Because if it's not in the book, David Aurora thought it's probably not edible. It might be in Mushrooms Demystified, which is like the Mushroom Bible I'll show you later, but it's definitely not something that you want to throw in your mouth in this book. <laughs> okay, so oyster mushroom. It's growing shelf-like on dead trees, logs, uh -huh. or stumps. We should get in there very carefully, dig that thing up and bring it out. I want the whole thing. And let's see what it is. But, what I did was, I had one here that was looking like this, and I did this and didn't see anything, and then this one here 
was like this, I did this, mm -hmm. and now you see a pretty distinct color there. Mm -hmm. Turn, turn. <laughs> oh wow, look at that, it's got a thick stem here. Oh, okay. whoa. Let's bring out the book. Bring out the book. If you know what it is, don't say anything. If you don't know what it is, we're gonna go through the book together and you're gonna tell me what that is. Yeah, looking for the Amanita section here. Amanita so wait, wait, does wait, not wait, look wait, like a wait, death wait, cat. Wait, we got to Amanita already? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get to Amanita. Let's go back. Okay. okay. Uh, All right, instructor yeah. says roll back, roll back. Here. Here. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, so okay. the gills are white, pinkish, or yellow. Okay. Yellow. Yellow. And, and it has encased by a veil that forms a vulva or a sac, scaly rings or collar. Is this not scaly? I mm -hmm. can totally see why you think that is because it totally looks like it is but that's yeah. actually not so oh, this is not. like a very tough example of this but not no scaling. it's actually not so if this was you because this is your first time you should throw that away because that's exactly what that looks right, like that mm -hmm. and that. but i can guarantee you that's not what that is this is just kind of an older version for some reason it has broken apart ah. so it is definitely not in the amanita uh, oh. family Oh. Mm. I know, that's super confusing. Most of this type, this species that you will find, will not look like that. It will not have this stuff on the on the stem. Snap it. Doesn't really snap. Doesn't okay, really snap. so that's very fibrous. Fibrous, is a fibrous snap. And now we have to spores. go look at the spores. Spores. Okay. Uh, so we can't look at the spores, but I can tell you right here and now, it's coming down into these. Okay, so they're going to be white, pinkish, yellow, or lilac. So then you're looking for primitive or fairly thick, blunt. fairly thick gills that are blunt, forked, connected, and run down the stalk, which they do not. Mm -mm. Okay, and yet these actually do. Oh. So <laughs> all of these pieces that have broken loose, those are all or part of it. Part gills. of that skin oh, that was on the outside. I see. Okay. So the gill ran through here, through mm -hmm. here, all the way down. And this is why this is a super confusing one for you guys. If it was your first time, I would totally encourage you to throw it out. But these are primitive gills. They're brain-like, they're very thick, they're not page-like in a book. They do run down the stalk. It's just been broken up mm -hmm. as it was growing. Let's start okay. at the beginning. Okay. What's yeah. the, the cabin stock? Burnt orange. Burnt orange. Or orange brown. Check. Check. Brown. Uh-huh. Yes. Check. Cap or... small, broad, two and a half inches or less. Okay. Yeah. Check. Uh -huh. Fresh gills. Uh, wavy. Never sticky, slimy, or shiny. Okay. If mm -hmm. it's sticky or slimy, typically it's going to have stuff stuck to the top of it, like mm -hmm. pine needles, leaves. There's nothing stuck to it. Okay. Neither the milk nor the flesh changed color when exposed, so remember, and it didn't. When we cracked it, it stayed mm -hmm. white, right? Mm -hmm. It did not turn yellow. Entire mushroom brittle. The stalk snapping open cleanly like a piece of chalk. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. oh, like oh. a piece of chalk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right, veil yeah. ring and vulva absent, okay, which is so true. That's why we've got to keep the base right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Odor sweet like maple syrup. Now it's time to smell. Smell. Okay. Give us a smell. Oh, well, I already if smelled you don't have it. COVID, yeah, smell it. Yeah. I smelled it. Yeah. Okay. like sort it of has. waviness but this is like long kind of brown yeah fibers that go all the way down it and it's called a velvet foot because it actually feels like velvet when you're actually touching oh, this it is not, bad. not at all not so. at all see all of those holes uh -huh. that means it's full of bugs bugs okay not good no can do all right. Right. Check all of these. these came off of wood, right? Yes, all of these came out of wood, yep. yes. Okay, those are good? all of them have their stem free from their gills, so that is good. Those are definitely built deer mushrooms, so this we can keep those. I want to keep those, those. okay, all right. Oyster mushrooms are a little chewier, so definitely a different texture to them. Hi, I'm Dr. Kev. My channel is Catch and Cook California. If you're interested in learning foraging uh, throughout California, I'm based in the Bay Area, but uh, I grew up foraging up here. I did my master's down in Southern California, so I know a lot about the resources down there as well. I teach people how to fish. I teach people how to free dive and spear fish, how to throw crab snares, teach people bushcraft and survival skills. Um, 
My PhD was in archaeology with a specific emphasis in traditional technologies, so I make stone tools, bows and arrows, survival skills, etc. If any of that is of interest, hit me up, catch the letter N, cook, ca, at gmail.com. Okay.